to contradict the big power of parochial smoggy, one size does not fit all. In laboring to understand the hate that hate produced, it's important also to push yourself to understand the love that understanding produced. No one can speak for everyone, but our society has become too confused. My grandparents and great-grandparents and my mother long ago, 70, 80 years ago, would sit around the radio which was all there was in those days, eating popcorn and milk. I still do that. I take a bowl, fill it with milk, make popcorn and put it in. For me, it is delicious. Not everyone shares a taste in such a poor person's gourmet. Our society is divided by class, by knowledge, by surreptitious behavior, which means secrets with the we keep. We've modernized, we've created ideas that are, exist in a sort of override. And we've tolerated things in our communities as normal that we can't control because of the powers that be in the underworld around us, because of finance, because for many people, money heals more than understanding heals. Our medical care providers have instead of being people that we thank and bless, become objects of suspicion. Our laboratories have gone offshore to evade laws passed that were sensible laws to prevent misconduct by laboratories. And our communities have become more touch sensitive, more distant from one another, more afraid to be part of one another's trauma. People are seen more and more as an inconvenience. It's considered staffing on the rights of one's betters to concern oneself with the welfare and future state of the earth and its children. We have a phrase now, particularly forcefully used and presented over and over again as an organizing principle by the United Nations in schools like Columbia, where my father was a teacher's college with Eisenhower. This phrase Sustainable Development Goals. The Sustainable Development Goals graph is available online if you search for it. It's broken down and pertains to how we can save the planet without excising ourselves or a large portion of those for whom the real powers that be, which is all of us, are responsible, certainly as much as we are responsible for ourselves. When we learn about the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic, we must also learn about the plight of the deaf, some of whom struggle to understand language at all, and help 
make sure that they have contact with other people like them. We must disempower the neocon argument that media has a patriotic override switch over all of our moral sensibilities. It's becoming tyrannical, totalitarian, increasingly isolating the United States of America as a moral pariah. Our only answer is to combat other powers who are in a bind of their own recklessness by saying, what about them? What about them? One asks, why is this country doing this to me? One asks, is there a purpose in making America irrational and despised? One asks, do they really mean well this deep, power structure, they call it. It looks to me like the colossals of money baggery. The oligarchs, as they're sometimes called, the leapfrogs who prance around behind the scenes of the nation state have been slapping five at the artificial intelligence barber shop, figuring out how they can puppet master our society. We need fresh water. We need safe forests. We need biodiversity. And our schools need to tune in to the change over to an emphasis on biodiversity, renewables, and sustainable development goals. I have always had categorical knowledge as my priority. Studying for entertainment, the list of categories that you find sometimes in the back of a thesaurus. My peers criticized me for it. I worked in libraries and enjoyed library science. I was fascinated by lectures about algorithms. I believe in preserving the history. One of the histories that needs to be preserved is the history of our confusion so we can somehow manage to understand how we became so confused. 